Hi, this is the Wednesday afternoon update on Hurricane Laura. As always, the thoughts here are just mine and in making decisions, preparations about how to prepare for or evacuate from Hurricane Laura along the Louisiana coastline, consult the National Hurricane Center, your local weather service office, and your local emergency management officials. As they have local scale information, I'm just here to provide a big picture analysis of the storm. As we look out over the Gulf uh, this afternoon, we see an unfortunately ominous picture of a very mature Hurricane Laura with an eye that is now clearing out on satellite imagery. You can see it rotating rapidly there here on the one minute visible, barreling northwestward now toward the southwest Louisiana coastline near or just east of the Texas-Louisiana border. The storm has been rapidly intensifying since sometime during the middle of the night last night. We've had a deepening rate of about two to three millibars per hour since that time. The current recon plane is in there finding continuing pressure falls down three millibars between the two passes it's done already at about 950 millibars now. Maximum winds in the northeastern eyewall have been observed at about 140 miles per hour from the aircraft and winds of at least 100 to 120 miles per hour are evident on the other sides of the eye wall as well, even the western and southern side, which are typically a little bit weaker. So this makes uh, Laura a Category 4 hurricane and further intensification seems to be occurring and may remain possible through the time of landfall. If there's anything that's going to arrest this intensification trend, it will be the onset of westerly wind shear that is expected to begin around now. You can actually see evidence of that on the visible satellite. Some of the mid-level clouds, not the outflow expanding this way, but underneath that, some of these clouds are coming out of the northwest. That is because of the westerly flow developing aloft underneath the outflow that is now acting on the core of Laura and given enough time will eventually start disrupting the core but at this point it is probably too late to reduce Laura's intensity in any appreciable way and at this point whatever the exact intensity is at landfall it's not really going to matter to you because whether the wind is 120 or 150 we're talking about potentially catastrophic damage from storm surge flooding that is already baked into the cake here. This is likely to be an unprecedented historical event for this portion of the Northwest Gulf Coast. The kind of storm surge flooding that is coming here has not been seen in the historical record and could exceed that of Hurricane Rita in 2005 in many locations, especially here near and just east of Lake Charles, Louisiana. This is not something to mess with. If you're in an evacuation zone due to storm surge flooding, you need to heed those evacuation orders to leave. There is still some time to do so as of the making of this video. This is the radar picture from a Mark Nissenbaum's site showing that the core of Laura remains offshore for the moment. Now we do have some outer bands that have already moved onshore with squally weather and those could potentially contain tornadoes uh, some at some point over the next few hours. So do be aware that very quickly spinning up tornadoes with short warning time may occur. So keep an eye on your phone and your weather radio for emergency alerts if you're preparing to leave. And uh, if you're in this flood zone here, you can see this on the forecasted map from the NHC. All of the water that is expected to come from the ocean inland as far as 30 miles from the coastline here all the way up into Lake Charles and all along this portion of the Louisiana coastline from the border down toward the Mississippi River Delta. Again, this could be the worst storm surge flooding event in the historical record for this portion of the Gulf Coast. You should be taking this extremely seriously. NHC's wording here is about as dire as it gets, calling this storm surge, quote, unsurvivable. This is used as a word for a very good reason. The power of water is nothing to mess with. Even the National Weather Service forecast office in Lake Charles has evacuated their own building. That should give you a clue how serious the situation truly is. If we look at the water vapor satellite picture here again, we can see the trough over Texas and Oklahoma. Apologies for the flashing frames there. This is going to now turn Laura just a little bit more toward the right as it moves toward the coast. And now it's basically wobble watching at this point. The track is pretty dialed in to this part of the coastline that we've been talking about for the last day or day and a half. 
This is again the radar showing that northwestward motion and at this point wobbles will matter a lot in terms of who gets the eye wall at the coast and the strongest winds and then especially for Lake Charles in particular whether or not the eye comes up just to your west or just to your east could play a huge role in what the maximum water level is in that particular region. But keep in mind in terms of raw wind impacts, this is much bigger than just the eye wall. And you can see from the recon observations that everything in purple here around the storm center is capable of giving you hurricane force wind gusts, translate that to the coast, and you have a very wide region that can be impacted by potential wind damage and power outages. This trajectory at the moment is going to keep the Houston Metro out of the eye wall, which is good news for you in Harris County, but do not assume that you cannot get hurricane force wind gusts potentially on the back side of this. Not all of this part of the core has even come onto the radar screen yet, but this side of the storm is also ferocious and we could see winds sustained over 50 miles per hour in portions of eastern Texas with gusts over hurricane force over 80 miles per hour in some of these counties. So we are still talking about a significant storm here. Fortunately, you guys will be on the offshore flow part of the storm to the west of the eye when it makes landfall. So storm surge values in Galveston Bay are going to be lower than they otherwise would be if the storm was coming in closer. So this is a tremendously close a call for Houston. Unfortunately, not so for your neighbors to the east here as southwest Louisiana, again, will be receiving a hit from the strongest storm that we have seen in the historical record for this part of the coastline. This is the NHC official forecast showing the warnings currently in place here. These red warnings are for wind only. The storm surge warnings extend even farther east along the Louisiana coastline. As you can see, the large wind field in orange here is all 40 miles per hour or stronger. All that wind on this east side is pushing water on shore and lots of Louisiana is flood prone on the southern coast. So we are expecting storm surge flooding again to be the most life-threatening hazard here, along with inland flooding from rainfall that is expected along a whole swath uh, well inland of the coast. And keep in mind that since Laura is a faster moving storm, it is going to bring strong winds and rainfall even well inland from the coast. This is not just a coastal event. Power outages, wind damage, and inland flash flooding will be a problem even well away from the landfall point here. So just remember that going forward in your preparations. You still have time if you're more inland. If you're along the coast, if you haven't left yet, you gotta go now. If you're in a flood prone region, uh, water is nothing to mess with. Wind, you can survive in a sturdy structure. Ocean water flooding into your building, not always the case. So make sure you leave, contact your friends and family if they haven't left yet and they're in a region that is at risk from this storm surge threat. Here's another look at that picture showing you where that water is going to be. You can look at this map yourself at hurricanes.gov to see where your local address uh, is and what the inundation is possible there. Again, just stay safe. This is probably going to be the last video update you get from me. You can always follow my Twitter, but at this point, this is about local impacts. The forecasting phase of this storm is coming to an end, and I provide a bird's eye view of the storm, but I can't get to a local detail that your emergency management officials can from your county, your city, and your local National Weather Service office. They can give you more uh, pertinent details than I can for your particular location. Please do keep up with them and be safe, everyone. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.